Revelation, when you start in chapter 1, you have John on the Isle of Patmos, and he has a vision of Jesus Christ, and he sees the seven uh, candlesticks. In chapters 2 and 3, he explains that, you know, there's uh, messages to seven churches, which were literally around at that time. In chapter 4, we see John then taken in the Spirit into heaven, okay? And that's where he's shown basically the rest of the stuff in the book of Revelation. So, at the beginning, we're just seeing... Um, obviously there's a lot to learn, but, but we're starting to see the prophetic events starting kind of in chapter 4. Chapter 5, there's the, the subject of the book comes up that, that only the Lamb is able to, wor to, to, is worthy to open. And the book has seven seals on it. So, you know, it, it talks a lot about that book in, in chapter 5. And then in chapter 6, he starts to open up the book. And what we're going to see with all these seals that these are describing the Great Tribulation. So I'm, we're starting here tonight because Matthew 24 talks a lot about the Great Tribulation. And it talks about how there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. We, you know, again, we went all over all that last week. But I want you to see how Revelation chapter 6 lines up with tribulation, with the fact that there's tribulation going on, with the fact that this, this, all these things that we're going to see in Revelation chapter 6 coincides with anything that you would ever find in Scripture as being tribulation or troublous times or perilous times. Nothing supernatural as like God pouring out wrath involved in Revelation chapter 6 up until the time of the sun and moon being darkened. And so that's the key sign or the key element that we see. And just as we saw in Matthew chapter 24 that the reaping of the angels gathering together the elect happens after that event. We're going to see the same exact thing played out in Revelation. We're going to see where the rapture actually is in Revelation chapter 7. And <laughs> if you're going to compare, let's just say, you know, I know there's different views on, on eschatology, on end times, but if you're going to compare a pre tribulational rapture to what we believe a post trib, pre wrath rapture, and compare the scripture, you got to figure if, you know, the book of Revelation of all books should at least cover an event like the rapture, like the, the, the first resurrection, you know, people being caught up. I mean, it's a pretty huge event. The Bible says that, you know, every eye shall see him. Okay, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is a, a very major significant event. Now, the pre-tribulation rapture position, as far as I know, everyone that believes in it, at least the vast majority of people is going to tell you that the rapture happens in Revelation chapter 4. Where John is taken into the spirit, you know, by the spirit, in spirit is, 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 is um, taken up into heaven. Okay. And they're going to say that is a picture of the rapture. Now, there's many reasons why that's silly to me. I mean, I, I've never, I've, I'll tell you this much. I've never read the Bible and ever thought, like after reading that, even before being really well versed in, in scripture, in, in rapture, the, you know, theology or anything like that, there is nothing, if you were just, without somebody telling you that, oh no, there's this doctrine and we're going to go out before everyone else and before there's any trouble, there's no reason why anyone would read Revelation chapter 4 and think, oh yeah, that's, there's a picture of the rapture right there. People have been shown things by God in, in many other places in Scripture, you know, and nobody's saying, oh, well, this is a picture of this. this is, you know, they're just being shown things by God. And when you see the chronology in Revelation 6 and 7, I think it's very hard to dispute how much this just makes perfect sense of, of yeah, of course this is the rapture event. Of course this is when it actually happens chronologically in place. So, Comparing Matthew 24 with what we're going to see here in Revelation 6 and 7, I think you will see nothing but consistency. You don't have to do any, well, this actually represents this. And then the other thing they'll say is, well, you don't find the church mentioned anywhere else after Revelation 3. Right? The church isn't mentioned again, so that must be the rapture because they say the church is gone. But see, <laughs> the problem with that is that when an independent fundamental Baptist is pre-tribulation rapture and say, well, you don't see the church after that, I thought we were Baptist and not Catholic. Amen. Because when you say, I don't see the church, the church, the, the church, what are you referring to? 
Steadfast Baptist Church? The other local church? Some other local New Testament church? No, they're referring to the church as in the Catholic church. Because the word Catholic literally means universal. That's what it means. That the Catholic church started, um, the Roman Catholic church wanted to gather all the pagan religions and everybody together under one religion, under one form of Christianity, which is why it's called the Catholic church, because it's universal, because they're trying to bring everybody into it and just have one church. And just this huge organization is called the church. We do not believe in a Catholic church. We do not believe in a universal church. We don't believe that there's, you know, because a church, literally the word church is a congregation. So how can you have a congregation where every single believer in the whole world is gathered together? We don't have that at this time. There's no such thing that even exists. In the future, it will exist where everybody's gathered together. But that's why we have local churches. That's why in, in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you have the letter to the churches, not to the church. It's not one letter to the church. Every letter is written to the church at, to the churches here, to the church there. That's what they're written to. It's not to this, the church. You don't find that reference anywhere in Scripture. You don't find it. It's a, it's a man-made idea that there's this thing called the church.